our low future chartered accountant. Today is day fourth, and we'll start with question number fifth. So come to question number fifth. The question is of May 2016 attempt. Similar question asked in May 2019, and is also given RTP 2018. So, following is a summarized balance sheet of Complicated Limited as on 31st of March 2016. Equity shares of rupees 10 each fully paid up. So, equity share is of rupees how much? Of rupees 10 each fully paid up, which is 12,50,000. Now, after that, bonus share. So, remember, bonus shares is also equity share capital. Is also equity share capital, which is given separately here. But the bonus share is the share which we have given at free of cost which we have given at free of cost bonus additional share that, that we have given to existing shareholder at free of cost this is also equity share capital so your total equity share capital will be 12 lakh 50 thousand plus 1 lakh that will be how much 13 lakh 50 thousand so total paid up capital will be 13 lakh 50 thousand now after this share option outstanding account sometime company offers shares to their employees Sometime company offer share to their employee uh, shares to their employee and at a price which is lower than the market price at a lower than the market price so at that time why they offer at a lower than the market price they, they put some condition on employee for example you have to stay with the company for the next three years or five years then we'll give a share uh, of the company which is lower than the market price suppose the market price is rupees suppose 500 we'll give them at rupees 200 rupees example so we offer them at a lower price so at that time we call it is employee stock option plan so at that time we create a reserve at that time we create a reserve and this reserve will be converted into share capital only this reserve will be converted into share capital so this share option outstanding account it's a new term for you it will come under reserve and surplus it will come under reserve and surplus but remember it is not it is a part of basically sop chapter but share option outstanding account is come under reserve and surplus but remember one thing, it is not a free reserve. It is not a free reserve. It is not a free reserve, which we have we recorded under share option outstanding. It, we recorded under reserve and surplus because ultimately it will be converted to share capital. At that time, at that time, we will give shares to employ, share to employees. At that time, it will be converted into share capital. So we record under reserve and surplus as per schedule three of the companies act, but it is not a free reserve. Now, second is revenue reserve. Uh, which is free reserve revenue reserve is a free reserve so revenue reserve is a free reserve then securities premium is not a free reserve but when we do the calculation of buyback at that time we also consider securities premium so this is also a free reserve only for the purpose of buyback and profit and loss account balance is also a free reserve then capital reserve you have here one lakh revaluation reserve one lakh unpaid dividend 1 lakh unpaid dividend is liability these three are these three are free reserve free reserve i know that securities premium is not free reserve but for the purpose of buyback as per the company that we also consider it as free reserve now i'm coming to next one next one here the unpaid dividend unpaid dividend is unpaid dividend is liability it's a debt unpaid dividend means we are liable to pay it is a dividend payable, but we have not paid it. It's a debt. It's a debt. Okay. Then it will come under current liability. Okay. 12% um, debenture secured, 12% uh, um, debenture. It's a, it is also a debt. It will come under long term borrowing. Okay. Then advance from related party. We have You have taken an advance from related party. It is also a liability for you. It's a debt. Then current maturity of long term borrowing. What do you mean by current maturity of long-term borrowing? Suppose you have taken a loan of rupees 10 lakh and from the date of balance sheet, 1 lakh is payable within a year. From the date of balance sheet, I am saying 1 lakh is payable within the year and remaining 9 lakh is payable after 1 year. I mean to say, you have taken a loan of rupees, suppose 10 lakh. This balance sheet date, suppose 31st of March, 23 suppose balance sheet date. So, here... For here, for the amount which is payable in one year, suppose here 1 lakh rupees I am liable to pay and in the next 9 year I am liable to pay 9 lakh. So, this is current maturity of long term borrowing. This is current maturity of long term borrowing. We call it current maturity of long term borrowing. Okay. So, it is also a liability, but 
then application money received for allotment due for refund. So, you have received the application money, but received for allotment due for refund. Due for refund means application money, uh, you have received the application money, the excess application money that we are liable to refund, repay, refund. If you are liable to refund, then it is a liability for us. We are liable to pay. So, all these points are related to, related to debt. So, here, now they given us fixed asset 46,50,000, current asset 40 lakhs. The company wants to buy back 25,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each on 1st of April 2016 at rupees 20 per share. What is the face value of share? Face value of share is rupees 10 each on 1st of April 2016 and they want to do buyback at what price? They want to do buyback at rupees 20. It means rupees 10 is premium on buyback. We are doing the buyback of rupees 10. We are doing buyback at rupees 20. So, difference of rupees 10 represents the excess amount that we are paying here. Represent what? It represents the premium on buyback. Buyback of share is duly authorized by article and necessary resolution has been passed by the company toward this. The payment for buyback of share will be made by the company out of sufficient bank balance available shown as part of current asset. What does it mean? It is mentioned that they will pay the buyback amount out of the sufficient cash balance they have as a part of current asset. It means bank, I mean they, when they will pay it, that is a bank account. That bank is a part of what? Bank balance is a part of current asset. That's why they are saying out of sufficient bank balance available show as a part of current asset. It means it's a part of this current asset. They have not mentioned inventory and dif uh, different uh, inventory, bank balance, cash, trade receiver. They have not mentioned it. They just they have mentioned current asset. So, all these come under current asset. Okay. So, now they tell us that comment with your calculation. Now, this is very dangerous. What does it mean comment with your calculation? It means that we have to calculate those three tests. Do you remember those three tests? What are those three tests? That is, we have to calculate here uh, that depth equity. Just one. First is where it is resource test, then share outstanding test and debt equity ratio test. So, we have to do calculation. We have to, because it is asked in the question, comment with your calculation, whether the buyback of shares by the company is within the provision of the Companies Act 2013. If yes, pass necessary general entries towards buyback of share and prepare the balance sheet after the buyback of shares. So, we have to first do the calculation and maximum number of shares that they can do buyback as per the provision of the Companies Act, we have to first calculate it. And we have to see whether this 25,000 is within that limit. If yes, if yes, then we have to pass general entry. Then, then after buyback, then we have to prepare what? Balance sheet. So, first write down here. First write down here. Okay. Write down here day 4 and question number 5th, page number 11. So, question number 5th, page number 11. Question number 5th, page number 11. So, first we will do the calculation. So, write down here determination, determination of buyback of maximum, buyback of maximum number of shares, number of shares as per as per companies act 2013 as per companies act 2013 so first is the resource test first is resource test okay so write down here first is resource test So, here the condition is maximum permitted limit, maximum permitted limit is 25 percent of paid up capital of paid up capital and free reserve of paid up capital and free reserve. So, here what happened? First, we have to calculate paid up capital and free reserve. As you can see in question, there are 
so many frees are here and so many debt here so what we can do we know paid up capital is 13 lakh 50 thousand but what we can do here we can calculate here that uh, free reserve also we can make a working note on paid up capital and free reserve. we can also make a working note on debt because the items are more here so we can make a working note on it so what you have to do you have to do the you have to keep the space for one and a half page keep the space for one and a half page okay keep the space for one and a half page and then write down and then write down working note keep the space for one and a half page and then write down working note okay so working note number one working note number one paid up capital paid up capital and paid up capital and free reserve paid up capital and freezer okay so we'll do the calculation of paid up capital and freezer first write down here equity share capital which is given in question equity share capital including write down including bonus shares including bonus shares how much is the equity share capital which is given which is 12 lakh 50 thousand 12 lakh 50 thousand equity share capital is 12 lakh 50 thousand which is given in question plus 1 lakh as bonus share the total paid up capital is 13 lakh 50 thousand then add free reserve whenever i say free reserve for buyback that is including securities premium so free reserves write down here including Securities premium, including securities premium account. Okay, so here first freezer which is given here uh, revenue reserve, which is given in question. Revenue reserve is how much? Revenue reserve is fifteen lakh. So revenue reserve fifteen lakhs. Then you have securities premium then you have securities premium securities premium securities premium is 2 lakh 50 thousand okay then you have profit and loss account is 1 lakh 25 thousand so profit and loss account balance 1 lakh 25 thousand to do the total of free reserve including securities premium that is 15 lakhs plus 2 lakh 50 thousand plus 1 lakh 25 thousand that is 18 lakh 75 thousand so total paid up capital and free reserve 13 lakh 50 plus 18 lakh 75 thousand that's come 32 lakh 32 lakh 25 thousand 32 lakh 25 thousand okay now we can or write down here working note on depth also depth okay so first depth these are the depth four or five items here. unpaid dividend how much one lakh so unpaid dividend unpaid dividend one lakh then you have 12% debenture 18,75,000 18,75,000 so 12% debentures write down in brackets secured okay then you have advance from related party you have taken advance from a related party unsecured loan it is yeah, unsecured advance it is 10 lakh so advance from Related parties, unsecured, 10 lakhs, 10 lakh. Then current maturity of long term borrowing, 16 lakh 50 thousand. Current maturity of long term borrowing, 
करंट मैच्योरिटी ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म बोरोइंग लॉन्ग टर्म बोरोइंग हाउ मच इट इज सिक्सटीन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड देन एट द एंड यूर एप्लीकेशन वन यू रिसीव फॉर अलॉटमेंट ड्यू फॉर रिफंड टू लैख तो एप्लीकेशन मनी रिसीव्ड फॉर अलॉटमेंट फॉर अलॉटमेंट ड्यू फॉर रिफंड फॉर अलॉटमेंट ड्यू फॉर रिफंड इट इज टू लाख हाउ मच टू लाख सो टोटल ये वन लाख प्लस एटीन लाख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्लस टेन लाख प्लस सिक्सटीन लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड प्लस टू लाख दैट इज फोर्टी एट लाख फोर्टी एट लाख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ डेप्ट ओके ओके ऑफ यू रिटर्न नाउ कम डे फर्स्ट डे टेस्ट दैट इज रिसोर्स टेस्ट राइट डाउन ईयर रिसोर्स टेस्ट ओके राइट डाउन ईयर पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्री रिजर्व एंड फ्री रिजर्व वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड इट वर्किंग नोट नंबर वन That is seen working note number one. How much it is? Thirty-two lakh twenty-five thousand. So write down here. Thirty-two lakh twenty-five thousand. Then condition twenty-five percent we can utilize. So twenty-five percent of twenty-five percent of paid-up capital and freezer. Twenty-five percent of rupees thirty-two lakh. Twenty five thousand. That's come. That's come. Thirty two lakh twenty five thousand multiply by twenty five percent. That's come eight lakh six thousand two hundred and fifty. So how much amount we can utilize for the purpose of how much amount we can utilize for the purpose of buyback as per first condition eight lakh six thousand two fifty. But if you want to convert into number of shares for one share, how much we are paying for one share? We are paying twenty rupees. So write down here. maximum maximum number of shares number of shares that can be that can be bought back is rupees 8 lakh 6250 Divided by rupees twenty. So how much you are paying for one share rupees twenty? If I have eight lakh six thousand two hundred and fifty, and for one share I am paying rupees twenty. So divided by twenty. So how much it is, it is coming forty thousand three hundred twelve point five. So how much we will consider forty thousand three hundred and not twelve. If it is twelve point five, don't tell me two hundred three hundred and thirteen will consider. No, it will consider only twelve only. So forty thousand three hundred twelve share. We have discussed about it. If you say point five, we round it off to three hundred and thirteen. So three hundred forty thousand three hundred and thirteen multiplied by twenty. If you if you do, that's come eight lakh six thousand two hundred sixty. It is more than the amount which is permitted. So don't round it off to three hundred and thirteen. Take it as three hundred twelve only. Okay. Now, as per first condition, condition how much maximum share that we can do buy back forty thousand three hundred and twelve. Now second second test here share outstanding test share outstanding test share outstanding test okay second test now number of shares number of shares outstanding first we have to calculate the number of share outstanding so total amount of share capital is 12 lakh 50000 plus 1 lakh is of bonus shares and one share is of rupees how much one share is of rupees 10 so divided by 10 one share is of rupees 10 so 13 lakh 50000 divided by 10 so total number of share outstanding 1 lakh 30 5000 shares maximum permitted 25% so 25% of 
द शेयर आउटस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द शेयर आउटस्टैंडिंग सो वन लाख थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड शेयर मल्टीप्लाई बाय ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सो दैट्स कम थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी शेयर सो एज पर दीज कंडीशन एज पर पॉइंट नेक्स्ट शेयर आउटस्टैंडिंग टेस्ट द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ शेयर दैट वी कैन डू बाय बैक इज थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी Here it is forty thousand three hundred and twelve. Here it is okay. So as per first condition, forty thousand three hundred and twelve. As per second, thirty three thousand seven fifty. How much we want to do buy back? We want to do buy back twenty five thousand only. So there is no violation of first test. There is no violation of second test. It was twenty five thousand lower than this, and lower than this. Okay. Now third is debt equity ratio test. Third, debt equity, debt equity. रेशियो टेस्ट ओके डेप्थ इक्विटी रेशियो टेस्ट आफ्टर बाय बैक आफ्टर बाय बैक डेप्थ कैन नॉट बी डेप्थ कैन नॉट बी इन एक्सेस ऑफ ट्वाइस इन एक्सेस ऑफ ट्वाइस ऑफ पेड अप कैपिटल And free reserves, paid up capital and free reserve. So, what is the second condition? After the buyback, your debt cannot be more than the twice of the paid up capital and free reserve. So, first, how much is the debt we are? So first is debt. We are making working note on debt. Working note number two. So, you can take a total from there. How much it is? It is. Forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand. Forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand. So here, forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand. Forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand is the is the existing debt. Now, how much we can do after the buyback? Write down there. Minimum, minimum paid-up capital, paid-up capital, and Free reserve, minimum paid-up capital and free reserve to be maintained. To be maintained after buyback. To be maintained after buyback. How much is exit? To be main, minimum paid-up capital and free reserve that should be maintained after buyback. There is fifty percent of debt. So write down here forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand. Fifty percent of this it should be maintained. So forty-eight lakh twenty-five thousand multiplied by fifty percent. That's come twenty-four lakh twelve thousand five hundred. This much should be maintained. Paid up capital fees after buyback minimum it should be maintained. Why? Suppose if it is lower than just for the understanding purpose, take a lower of this twenty-four. If I say this, suppose it is twenty-four lakh. Your paid up capital fees after buyback. Suppose it is twenty-four lakh. And twice of twenty four lakh will come forty eight lakh. So your debt will be more than forty. Uh, debt is more than forty eight lakh. Now this forty eight lakh twenty five. So your paid up capital and freezer should be at least fifty percent of your debt. So after buyback, your paid up capital and freezer it should be how much fifty percent of your debt. Okay. So write down here how much the present point number C. Paid up capital here write down present like present. Present paid up capital. Present paid up capital and free reserve that we have calculated in working note number one. How much is paid up capital free reserve? Thirty two lakh twenty five thousand. So existing is thirty two lakh twenty five thousand. How much existing is thirty two lakh twenty five thousand? Remember one. Now. How much paid-up capital exists? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> How much paid-up capital and freeze existing you have? So existing paid-up capital and freeze up is thirty-two lakh. Like, and whenever I use any color other than blue color, that is for your understanding. So you don't have to write it down in examination this box and all. This is for your understanding. Okay. So 
एग्जिस्टिंग पेड अप कैपिटल इज थर्टी टू लैक ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्रीज ओके एग्जिस्टिंग प्रेजेंट पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्रीज ओके द वट हैपन आउट ऑफ दिस थर्टी टू लैक ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड सम विल बी ट्रांसफर टू सी आर आर टू सी आर आर आई कॉल इट एक्स एंड सम शुड बी मेंटेन मिनिमम इट शुड बी मेंटेन हाउ मच इट शुड बी मेंटेन ट्वेंटी फोर लैक ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड रिमेनिंग आई कैन यूटिलाइज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ बाय बैक इट मीन्स दिस थर्टी टू लैक ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड इज प्रेजेंट पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्रीज अप सम शुड बी मेंटेन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सी आर आउट फ्रॉम थर्टी टू लैक ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड सम अमाउंट विल बी मेंटेन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सी आर एंड सम मेंटेन द एट द पार्ट ऑफ पेड अप कैपिटल एंड फ्रीज इट शुड बी मेंटेन एंड रिमेनिंग कैन बी यूटिलाइज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ बाय बाय so we have to solve equation for it we have to solve equation for it so what we can do here keep this you have the space here for at least there should be space for 8 10 lines here okay because we will write one note also here so you have prepared the write down your note uh, working note number 1 working note number 2 now below working note number 2 uh, write down below working note number 2 write down working note number 3 now amount write down there amount transferred to transferred to crr and a maximum equity maximum equity to be bought back bought back will be calculated by simultaneous simultaneous equation simultaneous equation okay write down here suppose suppose amount of amount transfer of amount transferred to crr is x and maximum permitted maximum permitted buyback is y is y okay so write down here then then okay then first equation is i have 32 lakh 25000 is the present paid up capital and freezer Some amount will be transferred to CRR and some should be maintained. That is twenty four lakh twelve thousand five hundred. So remaining is the remaining is the what amount of is that amount that we can utilize for the purpose of buyback. Second equation. If I say Y, what is this Y? This is the amount which is available for the purpose of buyback is Y divided by. If I say divided by twenty, twenty is how much? Twenty is the buyback price. So total amount available divided by amount of uh, we are paying amount per share. The total amount amount available for buyback, the amount we are paying for one share. So y divided by twenty, then the number of shares we are doing buyback that will come. Y divided by twenty, and if I multiply by ten, that is face value. We have already discussed in previous question this. Multiply by ten, that is face value. So what we transfer to CRR. We transfer to CR a face value of shares buyback. So this is the total amount of buyback divided by amount we are paying on buyback. So number of shares for buyback come. Now number multiply by face value, then the amount of CRR will come. What we call it? We call it X. Or can I say it? Or can I say it? Two X equals to Y. Two X equals to Y. Okay. So here by solving by solving the above equation by solving the above equation we get by solving the above equation what we get x equals to y we have to calculate so here write down y equals to, this is 2x na 2x it is so 2x so here x will come here it will come 3x so 33 lakh 25000 minus minus 24 lakh 12500 divided by 3 Thirty-two lakh twenty-five thousand 
ओके थर्टी टू लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड माइनस ट्वेंटी फोर लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री इट इज कमिंग टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड ओके टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री इज कमिंग तो टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री इज कमिंग बट डू यू थिंक दैट टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री लेट सी एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री बट हाउ मच इज द फेस वैल्यू फेस वैल्यू इज रुपीज टेन सो वी कैन नॉट से टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री वाई विद द फेस वैल्यू इज टेन सो हियर वी विल राइट टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी आई विल से वाई थर्टी सो इफ आई से टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट इफ आई टेक टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री जस्ट जस्ट टेक सपोज इट राइट टाइप इधर क्या सी टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव टू टेन तो इट विल कम ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड एट्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री शेयर तो कैन बी इशू द शेयर इन फ्रैक्शन नो वी कैन नॉट इशू सो दैट्स वाई टेक टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी डोंट टेक एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री डोंट टेक एट हंड्रेड थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री टेक एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी सो इ नाउ वी फाइंड वी फाउंड एक्स थर्टी टू लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड माइनस टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी माइनस ट्वेंटी फोर लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इट्स कम फाइव लैख फोर्टी वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी ओके सो वी फाउंड एक्स एंड वाई राइट डाउन देयर राइट डाउन दियर ऑल ऑफ यू रिटर्न दिस एक्स एंड वाई एक्स इज द अमाउंट ऑफ सी आर आर वाई इज द अमाउंट ऑफ बाय बैक सो राइट डाउन हियर नाउ वी हैव रिटर्न हियर पॉइंट नंबर सी नाउ बिलो दिस पॉइंट नंबर सी राइट डाउन पॉइंट नंबर डी सो पॉइंट नंबर डी इज मैक्सिमम मैक्सिमम परमिटेड बाय बैक ऑफ इक्विटी Equity we have calculated in working note number three. How much the amount? This five lakh forty one thousand six hundred and seventy. Point number E. Maximum number of shares. Number of shares that can be that can be bought back. At the rate of rupees twenty per share, so here it will come five lakh forty one thousand six hundred and seventy divided by for one share you are paying twenty, so divided by twenty that's come two seven twenty seven thousand eighty three point five. So write down here twenty seven thousand eighty three point five. So we will take only eighty three. Okay. Eighty three, okay. Eighty three, twenty seven thousand eighty three share. So as per this debt equity ratio, maximum number of share that we can do, that we can do buyback is how much? Twenty seven thousand eighty three shares. So twenty seven thousand eighty three multiplied by ten, so that will come how much? Amount of X two lakh seventy thousand eight thirty. Okay. Now here we will uh, write a note here. So. The maximum number of share that we can do buyback is the lowest of these three tests. So and and lowest of these three is I think it is twenty seven. This is the lowest of these three, twenty seven thousand eighty three. How much we want to do buyback? We want to do buyback twenty five thousand, which is lower than twenty seven thousand eighty three. So there is no violation of Companies Act here. So write down maximum maximum number of shares. maximum number of shares that can be that can be bought back write down in bracket least of the above three least of the above three there is 27083 shares 27083 shares company Company qualifies all all tests for buyback of shares 
for buyback of shares and conclusion and conclusion is that it can buy maximum 27,083 shares on 1st of April 2016. But how much they want to do? 25,000 only. However, however, company wants to buy back, company wants to do buy back buy back only 25,000 shares at a rate of rupees 20. Therefore, therefore, buy back of 25,000 shares as desired by the company as desired by the company is within the provision within the provision of the company's act of the company's act okay within the provision of the company's act 2013 okay now they are not issuing any share in the market it is out of profit now we have to pass general entry and then we have to prepare balance sheet okay then we have to prepare balance sheet okay now after working note number three write down there journal entries journal entries journal entries in the books of Complicated Limited. General entries in the books of Complicated Limited. In the books of Complicated Limited. Okay. Now, draw this for half page. Only four entry will come. Okay. Okay, now first entry, then 2016, April 1st. First, we have to do, first we have purchase shares from the market. So, what entry we pass for it? Equity share buyback account, debit to bank account. Equity share buyback account debit, account debit. We are doing buyback of 25,000 shares. And for one share, we are paying how much? For one share, we are paying 20 rupees. So, 25,000 shares. For one share, we are pay paying 20 rupees. So, 25,000 multiply by 20, that's come 5 lakh. So, equity share buyback account debit to bank account. 5 lakhs. Being... Buyback of 25,000 equity shares, equity shares of rupees 10 each at a rate of rupees 20 per share, at a rate of rupees 20 per share. Okay. Now, second point. We have purchased share. Now we have to cancel it. When we cancel it, decrease in capital. What we do? Decrease in capital, debit it. So equity share capital account debit. Equity. Equity share capital account debit. So we are doing buyback of 25,000 share. And for one share, face value. Always remember when you... Cancel capital, 
capital always recorded at face value. When it, it will cancel, it will be cancelled at face value only. So, equity share capital account debit 2,50,000, shares multiply by 10. Now, we are paying extra 10 rupees. Shares of rupees 10, we are paying 20. The additional trend we are paying, that is premium on buyback. The expenses premium on buyback account debit 25,000 share multiply by rupees 10 that's come 250,000 2 now we will cancel we have purchased this share now we are cancelling this share to equity share buyback account to equity share buyback account that is 5 lakh so being cancellation of shares buyback being cancellation of shares buyback now we have paid some premium on buyback so we have to write it off so how much we want to write it of 2,50,000? This amount, this amount, that is premium on buyback. You know that premium on buyback, it can be adjusted against securities premium. It can be adjusted against profit and loss account or it can be adjusted against general reserve. So we will adjust against suppose securities premium. So whether we have balance of 2,50,000 securities premium. So you see here, we have balance of rupees how much? We have 2,50,000. So we will adjust against securities premium. We have adjust, uh, we have. 250,000. So, write down here. Securities premium account debit. Securities premium account debit. Securities premium account debit. 2,50,000. 2. Premium on buyback account 2,50,000 okay so here you have debited this premium on buyback and then you have credited it so you have cancelled this premium buyback again securities premium so write down here being premium on buyback being premium on buyback adjusted against Securities premium account. Securities premium account. The so first entry we have passed for equity share buyback. First we have purchased, then we have cancelled the share, and then we have adjusted the premium on buyback. Now it is not out of fresh issue of shares, it is out of profit. So we have to transfer to which account? CRR account. So you can see here, then we have to transfer to CRR account. What entry we pass here? So, we, we can utilize general reserve profit and loss account. We can also utilize securities premium. But don't give priority to security premium when we transfer to CRR account. Because what I have observed, then institute transfer to CRR account at the time of buyback of shares out of profit. Generally, they don't utilize securities premium here. So, first preference give to general reserve, then profit and loss account. If you don't have balance, then only utilize securities premium. So, here, how much we have transferred to CRR account? We have to transfer the face value of buyback. The face value of buyback is 2,50,000. So write on fourth entry now. Write on fourth entry here. Write on fourth entry here. So here fourth entry. Whether we have some balance in uh, revenue reserve or something. Just give me a minute. Yes, we have in revenue reserve. We have enough balance. We have 15 lakh. So here. Write down revenue reserve account debit. Revenue reserve account debit. Revenue reserve account debit. 2,50,000. Why 2,50? The face value of buyback of shares is 2,50. So we have transferred only, we have to transfer only face value. The so revenue reserve account debit 2,50,000 to capital redemption. Reserve account two lakh fifty thousand being being 
फेस वैल्यू ऑफ शेयर्स बॉड बैक आउट ऑफ प्रॉफिट आउट ऑफ प्रॉफिट ट्रांसफर्ड टू ट्रांसफर्ड टू सी आर आर अकाउंट एस पर लॉ ट्रांसफर टू सी आर आर अकाउंट एस पर लॉ ओके नाउ यू है पास जनरल एंट्री नाउ वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर बैलेंस नाउ वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर बैलेंस शीट हियर ओके सो हियर दिस इक्विटी शेयर बाय बैक अकाउंट ऑल्सो गेट कैंसल यू हैव डेबिटेड हियर इक्विटी शेयर बाय बैक अकाउंट and then you have credited here equity share buy back account that also cancel okay now we have to prepare balance sheet so write down here balance sheet balance sheet of complicated limited after buy back as on फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल 2016. फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल 2016. थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन ड्रॉ दिस लिटिल बिट मोर देन हाफ पेज ओके लिटिल बिट मोर देन हाफ पेज ओके ओके राइट डाउन दे नोट अमाउंट ओके नोट अमाउंट सो य First, equity and liability. Equity and liabilities equity and liabilities point number वन shareholders fund under shareholders fund share capital will come. then reserve and surplus then reserve and surplus okay now second point non current liability under non current liability long term borrowing will come then current liability third point current liability okay current liability under current liability write down short term borrowing short term borrowing just write down i will explain you each and every point short term borrowing then other current liability other current liabilities okay other current liabilities so now here the total will come then assets here assets assets okay write down there non current asset non current asset property plant and equipment property plant and equipment property plant and equipment intangibles and then non current investment non current investment and then write down second point here current asset okay the bifurcation is not given here in current asset just write down current asset okay okay so we'll prepare a notes to account on we'll prepare a notes to account on share capital reserve and surplus long term borrowing as a short term borrowing there is the one new item that we are going to discuss here that is current maturity of long term borrowing so write down here write down here 
notes to account number notes to account number four and write down also uh, these uh, other current liabilities okay other current. just write down i will explain it don't worry so note one two three four five there's no need to prepare a notes to account on property plan and equipment because only the one item is given here this is uh, where is property fixed asset they have used the word fixed asset now as per the um, schedule three as per the account extended 10 also we use the word property plan and equipment that's why i've written a property plan and equipment okay so one by one so where this share capital will come share capital is how, how many 12 lakh 50 plus 1 lakh so write down there 13 lakh 50 thousand so how much 13 lakh 50 thousand so 13 lakh 50 thousand okay 13 lakh 50 thousand total of these two what you have done here you have uh, you have your when you have passed general entry so you have here you have uh, where is share capital we, we, you have cancelled share capital by rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand so 13 lakh 50 you have debited here so we have to deduct it you know that capital liability is credit balance if you debit it minus if you have credit add so if debited here so minus 2 lakh 50 thousand how much it is it's come 1 lakh 10 thousand how much it is 1 lakh 10 thousand so write down there in notes to account number one notes to account notes to accounts number one share capital share capital this 11 lakh it is it is 11 lakh okay and share of rupees 10 each no? share 11 is the amount of capital and one share is of rupees 10 so we can say how many number of shit 1 lakh 10 thousand so 1 lakh 10 thousand equity shares of rupees 10 each so here it will come 11 lakh so total amount of share capital is how much 11 lakh you can write it down you can write it down in balance sheet 11 lakh okay so write down in balance sheet 11 lakh 11 lakh 11 lakh rupees okay now <clears throat> after this Second item is uh, share option outstanding account that is a part of reserve and surplus. So make working note, uh, notes account number two, reserve and surplus. Reserve and surplus. Share option outstanding account. Share option outstanding account share option outstanding account how much it is share option outstanding account is 4 lakh 4 lakh okay now second is what revenue reserve revenue reserve is how much 15 lakh revenue reserve write down in inner column 15 lakhs so whether we have utilized revenue reserve yes here you can see we have yeah. We have debited his revenue reserve. So, how much I have written? By mistake, I have written one more zero. It is 2 lakh 50. 3 zero. 1, 2, 3. Okay, 2 lakh 50 thousand. So, we have debited. Revenue reserve, reserve has credit balance. We have debited, we will deduct it. So, write down here. Let's transfer to. Let's transfer to CRR. 2 lakh 50 thousand. So how much will come in outer column 15 lakhs minus 2 lakh 50 thousand it will come 1 lakh sorry not 1 lakh 12 lakh 50 thousand 12 lakh 12 lakh 50 thousand 12 lakh 50 thousand okay then after this we have securities premium 2 lakh 50 but securities premium we have utilized here we have utilized here securities premium we have debited here 2 lakh 50 so an outer column zero will come. So write down there securities premium. Securities premium. How much we have here? Two lakh fifty thousand. Less adjusted against against premium on buyback. Premium on buy back how much it is two lakh fifty thousand so in outer column 
zero will come. Okay, in outer column zero will come. Next item now. Next item here is profit and loss account. It is one lakh twenty five thousand. So write down here. Next item is profit and loss account. Whether we have utilized profit and loss account? No. So one more important thing you have transferred to CRR. So we have to write down CRR also because new account CRR has been created here. So first write down profit and loss account. Profit and loss account. How much balance we have in profit and loss account given in question? One lakh twenty five thousand. Okay. One lakh twenty five. Then we have capital reserve one lakh, revaluation reserve one lakh. Write down there capital reserve. Capital reserve one lakh. Then we have revaluation. Revaluation reserve. We have one lakh. Revaluation reserve we have one lakh. And here we. We have created this capital redemption reserve account by rupees two lakh fifty. So write down here, capital redemption, capital redemption, reserve account. How much it is? Capital redemption reserve we have transferred to CRR account two lakh fifty thousand. Now do the total of this reserve and surplus. Four lakh. Plus twelve lakh fifty plus one lakh twenty five plus one lakh plus one lakh plus two lakh fifty is twenty two lakh twenty two lakh twenty five thousand twenty two lakh twenty five thousand. So write down this twenty two lakh twenty five thousand. Write down this twenty two lakh twenty five thousand. Where it will come in balance sheet under reserve and surplus. So write down here twenty two lakh twenty five thousand. Okay, now in balance sheet, next is unpaid dividend. Remember, unpaid dividend. We know that it's a debt, but it's a short term debt. You can see it is a current liability. It is a current liability. Okay, it's a current liability. So, uh, and debenture here, it's a, a debenture here. It's a long term borrowing. It's a long term borrowing. Okay, it's a non current liability. It's a non current liability. Advances from related party. Okay, write down one by one. Let's write down one by one. Write down here. Notes to account number three. Write down here notes to account number three. Short term borrowing. Short term borrowings. Sorry, notes to account number three. We have prepared on long term borrowing. I'm sorry. Write down the long term borrowing. Long term borrowings. Keep the space for three four lines. And then write down short term borrowing, short term borrowings. Okay. Then keep the space for two three lines, and then write down note number. Write down here fifth, which is other current, other current liabilities, other current. Liabilities, other current liabilities. Now one by one, we can see that the first item is unpaid dividend, which is other current liability. It's a current liability. Come under the heading other current liability. There is one lakh. So write down here unpaid, unpaid dividend, which is one lakh rupees. One lakh rupees. So write down there unpaid dividend, unpaid dividend, which is one lakh. Rupees. Next item now. Here you have twelve percent debenture uh, secured in non. It's a non-current liability. Remember, it's come under non-current liability, and under non-current liability, it's come under long-term borrowing. You can see here in balance sheet, you can see non-current liability, and under non-current liability, it's a long-term borrowing. So write down in notes to account number three. Secured. It is a secured loan. So write down the secured. Twelve percent debentures. Twelve percent debenture. Eighteen lakh seventy five thousand. Eighteen lakh seventy five thousand. Twelve percent debentures. How much it is? Twelve percent debenture. Eighteen lakh seventy five thousand. Okay. Now advance from related party unsecured. It's an unsecured loan. It's a debt. We know that. 
but whether it's a short term or long term so it's a we don't know advance may be for from the related party it may be for long term it may be for short term it is not mentioned here so we will assume that it's a long term if someone assume that it's a short term then you can they can consider it's a other current life but if you're assuming that if sorry if there's even a short term ball short term loan they will write it on the short term borrowing okay these both short term borrowing and short term borrowing and other current liability both come under the category of under the category of current liabilities okay and it's a non current liability so if we consider that advance from related party as a short term borrowing if you assume not mentioned there so i will write it down here short term borrowing if you are assuming it's a long term borrowing then we will write it down under long term borrowing long term borrowing long term borrowing which we are liable to pay after one year that is long term borrowing okay so we have, we are we have to assume something it, but it will there is no effect on balance sheet i mean to say the total will be same of the balance sheet obviously but here instead of if you assume that it's a long term borrowing write down here if you are assuming it's short term write down here we will write a note there so i am assuming here it's a long term so write down there unsecured unsecured advance from related parties you write down in bracket assume long term borrowing assume long term borrowings how much it is it is 10 lakh rupees so write down here 10 lakh rupees how much it is 10 lakh rupees now after this next item is current maturity of long term borrowing what is what does it mean current maturity of long term it's a long term borrowing but that amount which is payable within year have, we have discussed here any liability it's a, even it may it may be long it is a long term borrowing in fact but amount which is payable suppose the loan uh, suppose the loan of is offer is 1 crore and within one year we are liable to pay suppose 10 crore sorry 1 crore suppose the loan offer is suppose 1 crore and within one year we are liable to pay suppose 10 lakh the 10 lakh is the current maturity of long term borrowing so it will not be reflected as per schedule 3 under the companies act it will not be reflected under long term borrowing if it is the current maturity of long term borrowing it means we are liable to pay within a year that will be reflected under short term borrowing so write down here current maturity current maturity of long term borrowing of long term borrowings 16 lakh 50000 current maturity of long term borrowing how much it is current maturity of long term borrowing how much it is 16 lakh 50000 okay now here after this application money that we have received is excess application money that we have received of rupees 2 lakh that we are liable to refund it it's a current other current under current liability short term borrowing and other current liability it will come other current liability so write down here application money received for allotment due for refund how much it is 2 lakh rupees how much it is 2 lakh rupees so total amount here 1 plus 2 how much it is total amount here is 3 lakh rupees how much is the total amount total amount is 3 lakh okay any item pending no yes yes sorry fix that now you can do the total of these three notes to account third fourth and fifth so here it will come 28 lakh 75000 16 lakh 50000 so 28 lakh 75000 16 lakh 50000 and 3 lakh so write down all these three in balance sheet 28 lakh 75000 then 16 lakh 50000 short term borrowing other current liability is 3 lakh so other current liability is 3 lakh okay now there is no intangible asset there is no non current investment here how much is the property plan and equipment which is given in question which is 46 lakh 50000 so write down here 46 lakh 50000 write down here property plan and equipment 46 lakh 
फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ओके ना आफ्टर दिस नेक्स्ट इज करंट एसेट यू नो दैट बैंक अकाउंट इज ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ करंट एसेट सो फोर्टी लैक ओके टाइप इन योर कैलसी फोर्टी लैक इफ यू ऑब्जर्व यूर इन जनरल एंट्री हियर इन जनरल एंट्रीज हियर वी हैव क्रेडिटेड बैंक अकाउंट बाय रुपीज फाइव लैक सो माइनस फाइव लैक हाउ मच इट विल कम थर्टी फाइव लैक सो राइट डाउन हियर राइट डाउन हियर करंट एसेट यू कैन राइट डाउन इन ब्रैकेट टोटल अमाउंट विच इज गिवन फोर्टी लैक माइनस फाइव लैक that you have paid in outer column it will come 35 lakh now if you do the total of balance sheet now 11 lakhs 22 lakh 25000 lakh 28 lakh 75000 16 lakh 50000 and 3 lakh how much it is 81 lakh 50000 46 lakh 50 plus 35 lakh it is 81 lakh 50000 okay 81 lakh 50000 now here in general entity that you have passed you can see there you have debited here this equity share buyback account and then you are credited it it gets cancelled the premium on buyback you have debited here by like by 2 lakh 50000 and you have credited here cancel so all point we have considered yes okay so here this is question number it is question number fifth we have done with question number fifth now we'll take a break for 10 minutes and then we'll come to question number 6 but before i start question number 6 there is a concept called redemption of preference that i will discuss with you then we'll solve question number 6 after the break so break for 10 minutes you those who are watching here on google drive so just take a break for 10 minutes only no don't take more than 10 minutes okay take a break for 10 minutes only so that within the time frame your class will also be completed if the lecture is for about 2 and 1/2 hour total part 1 and part 2 and you're taking a break for half an hour in between the lecture will go to 3 hours so don't do that take a break for just 10 minute only okay 